is it important that we are consciously using our words to speak possibility into reality? What does that concept mean to you? How do you see that now? Why is that important now? Why are we, why are we here? Mm. Thanks, Shana. Um, you know, I think over the, over the years, you know, we've seen lots of different opportunities to like prepare for the stage and get on stage and like have the opportunity to have a talk. And, and I think I've always been really fascinated with the relationship between what you say and the intentionality in which you lead and how those two things are interconnected. And it probably goes back. I, I think, I think the first time I was on stage, I was two years old. I was up in church. I was up in church and I sang. And so my, my desire to, um, you know, to, to witness to folks and to be part of building a positive community. And in that case, it was, you know, childhood church um, started, you know, it's, it's really in my blood. And then, you know, reconnecting with my culture and really understanding how narrative and storytelling shape, shape cultures and, and, and lives and society it all started to make more sense. And I know we've all heard that quote um, to, you know, to watch your thoughts because they become your words and watch your words because they become your actions and watch your actions because that forms your character and, and your character, your character becomes your destiny. And I've always been, you know, impacted by that, that quote. And, um, I think for me, as a, you know, as a conscious woman leader, you know, parent in 2020, almost 2025, um, we're just, we're really living in a very, very interesting time. And we've never been more surrounded by a narrative, like externally that affects internally, and so really, I want to bring as much intentionality as I can in my work and through my work in terms of how do we how do we slow down and be aware <laughs> of the impact of that? How do we kind of put ourselves back in the driver's seat consciously? And it really does become, you know, it, it, it has to be part of our practice. And so, yeah, that's just like, that's kind of what prompted this conversation this morning and, and wanting to be in conversation with you, Shauna, to, to, to just have a little bit of a strategic conversation about what, you know, what is this? Why is this? Why is it important? Mm. I love that, Char. And I'm curious because you've been, you've been doing this for so many years, like i my jaw dropped when you told me that you've put over, you've prepared over 200 women to go on stages around the world. Like, wow. And I'm curious about that. But one thing that's coming to me after what you've just said, what's different about the time now? Like, what are you seeing shifting within people? Um, what, because you've been doing this for so many years what's different now is my question why why does it feel like now is the time what are you seeing well I, I can only speak you know from my own experience um but I will say yeah I've, I've always kind of I've kind of like done the work but also observed the work I've always you know when I was 30 years old I worked with this incredible um career coach uh, when I transitioned from the corporate world to becoming an entrepreneur and I'm 55 this year and she taught me, you know, to always be the director of my own life. Pretend you got a little camera up in the corner and watch yourself. And 
you know, all these years later, I've, I've always done that. You know, I've done the work, but also been far enough away where I can observe the work. And I think um, wanting to circle back to this to this program and this opportunity comes because there's an opening right now. I think um, through the pandemic, through certain life experiences, uh, economic, um, political, social, you know, socio um, experiences right now, there seems to be more of an opening for people to be willing to to dive a little deeper and speak has been a great vehicle to allow that to happen. Um, it is, you know, it is, it is a framework where people can really think about, you know, who am, who am I in this period of my life? You know, what is important to me? What do I want to be known for? What's the impact I want to make? And you know, the interesting thing now, having run speak from, I think it was mostly 2016 to 2018 was, you know, the, the biggest time. And it was primarily in Western Canada. And then other folks were kind of from different areas. Um, it's been long enough now to actually circle back to some of those alumni and actually track back and and see the trajectory of their life and their leadership and then track back to what they said during the program what they said on stage and actually and actually kind of see um it's like a little laboratory see what has happened since and I'm very very curious about that mm-hmm. um that that's one you know that I would so I would say the pandemic has created and more have created an, a bit of a different opening with people. Um, I would say that the fact that that we can kind of look back to mm-hmm. many women that have taken this program or some iteration of this program. Also, we did a power talk series and we did some power lunches and kind of see where those intentions ended up. Mm-hmm. Um I think those are two two really important pieces. Um, and there's others, you know, there's other aspects now that I'm um, very interested to lean more into um, in this next round, for sure. Mm-hmm. Love some of the snippets there. I just want to highlight the director of my own life. You know, what does it look like when I'm in that role of being the director of my own life? Questions for us to to think about for ourselves, not just once off, but constantly, you know, as Shara said, who am I? What do I want to be known for? What's the impact that I want to create? And how can I remain open to speaking that? Um, Knowing that I have the wisdom, the wisdom that I've gathered over the last couple of years, especially, and knowing that there's proof other women have gone before me they've spoken their intention into reality and have leveled up their life so I'm curious with all of that being said and the magic of all of that how do we move beyond typical presentations the way that it's always been how do we move beyond that to bring something different to bring more of an experience maybe more facilitation having worked with so many women how do we make that shift and what do you see actually works Mm -hmm. yeah thank you for that I mean this is definitely the work I love to do with with women with teams with creative teams um because I think it's you know the 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 opportunity that we have is to really go go deep with this, you know. So the opportunity to how do we flip a presentation or a pitch to feeling so much deeper, like to actually have that feeling where the audience experiences the depth in what you're talking about, even if they don't fully understand it. And it really is a, it's a soul to soul message, 
right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, and, you know, even for us on the, you know, on having the conversation today to give you something to think about, one of my favorite exercises that I do with folks is having them start to think about what I call is your, your soul stamp. And, and for me, that is, that's like, that's like getting really clear on the work that you're here to do in the world, the work that you chose to do, why you're even here in the first place in this lifetime, in this period of history. And, you know, I think that's been a continual exploration of mine, my entire life, getting deeper and deeper, clearer and clearer, purer and purer into what that work is. It's almost like every single person has it. It's, a, it's like a finger, fingerprint, right? It's a very, very unique gift. And, you know, in corporate world and, you know, business, we throw around purpose and we throw around this or that. But like, to be super honest, at the core, we're humans. <laughs> at the core, there is a gift that we're, we have been given to be here. And it, it's, it's unique to every single person. And that's why I call it a soul stamp. When you start to tap into like what that is and you're, you're, you're speaking and your delivery and your, you know, your sharing with folks comes from that place. That is what, what creates the, the palpable energy that's possible. Mm. And so what would happen in what would happen in politics around boardrooms in in business if we actually communicated from that place and it, there's just so much more substance and depth. So it's funny that you ask this Shauna because one of the one of the first things I do when I meet a person, I mean, it's energetic now, so it doesn't take me long, is I I just notice <laughs> where on the spectrum they're at. Where can I be with this person? And, it, and you know, without overwhelming them or assuming or anything like that, but I just kind of sense into how how truly authentic and honest is this person ready for me to be? But at this age and stage in my life, it's honestly the only way I want to be. Yeah, you can't do it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an alignment. It's not authentic. And it's not what the world needs. Yeah. I yeah. love that, Char. Oh, so many wonderful nuggets of wisdom there and reflection points and that soul expression. And yeah, I mean, I want to just tap into that a little bit more because sometimes there's a there's there can be a pressure of that, right? You know, mm -hmm. what what is our what is our soul's purpose? What are we here to do? That can be a big question. But I like how you framed it. It was it's a continuous journey. It, there's not one answer. Great. I'm doing my soul's work. You right. know, it's continuous and it's always evolving like we are. Mm -hmm. So I like how you've, you've framed your own journey around that. Do you have any advice that you'd give to women on the journey of tapping into that a little bit more, being more comfortable with that, or even some that are feeling maybe a little bit unsure of what that actually is? Yeah, again, I can only speak from my own experience, but I would say, you know, in my own learning, it's to be able to give yourself the space, mm. the space to do that. Um, we tend to keep ourselves so full that we actually just don't give ourselves the space. And and the second thing is to really be committed to the practice of it. Um, the, the practice, you know, of, of being quiet, of listening, of if, if it is a, it, you know, it, it's a calling. So it's not like you're searching for, for what it could be out there. It's a calling that is in here. 
And so, um, you know, just, just sitting quietly, I do a ton of journaling and sitting and walking and tapping in. Um, So it's, it's, I think people that might feel frantic about finding their purpose (laughs) And I'm not even sure I like finding your purpose because mm-hmm. it's not lost. Like it's mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> just tune in, right? Um, turn things down and tune in. Um, I think as well, you know, and and some of the folks on the call know this so well is as from my love of athletics and sports, you know, I really think too, like if if something is important to you. It, it has to be a practice. It has to be a, a daily commitment um, to putting that work in and, and really, you know, spending that time to just chip away at what it's not, right? That Michelangelo quote, quote you know, just, just let go of and chip away at what it's not and, and pick up, you know, if you've put something down that it's like, Oh, actually, you know what? It was that. I'm going to, I'm going to circle back and bring that back in. Um, Yeah. Those are two things, the space and the practice for sure. Mm. Yeah. So if you're not clear on what your purpose actually is, your purpose is to create space and get quiet and be patient. (laughs) And, (laughs) And I, and I always think of purpose as well as, you know, it doesn't have to be this, necessarily grand vision or act of service it's purposeful moments you know it's the way you show up when you speak to your barista in the morning or the question that you ask them or how you see them as a human being Mm. and you make time for them right like it's it's those purposeful moments that have such a big impact and we don't actually know the impact that we're having often that's Mm. what I've learned Um, so, you know, the women that I know and I'm surrounded with are so wise and, you know, it reminds me of that song, you know, uh, I am woman, you know, gaining that wisdom through often sometimes challenging, um, journeys or even pain, um, but our own experiences shape our wisdom. So what advice do you have for women that want to share their stories? Maybe they're a bit hesitant to share their stories. They're not quite Mm -hmm. sure how to express their stories. Maybe there's still a lot of emotion in their stories. It's still quite charged. I know you've done so much work on this. And I just want to ask you, what's your advice there? What What do you see from your perspective, from your experience? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually gave this this question a, a, a bit of thought prior because I really wanted to I really wanted to offer some helpful, you know, some helpful ideas around. It, it's easy for some people to speak up and it's not a natural gift for other people. So hopefully one of these, I'm going to answer it as in three parts. I'm going to answer it as the three parts of who I am, the indigenous storyteller, the entrepreneur and the founder and the business person, and then the, the visionary, the visionary, the, from, from the lens in which I see, um, First of all, I think that even though I'm answering as an Indigenous storyteller, I think we can all tap into this. But a lot of times when I know I'm heading into a situation where I've got butterflies and in speak, we le- we talk a lot about flipping the butterflies. Um, I I really ground into and I, I literally ground like I feel my feet. I bring my awareness to my legs. Um, I I tighten through my core, like I ground into who I'm showing up with. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're so in Western culture, like we're born thinking that we are here 
as an individual, singularly, you know, one person. And so I just shift it from me to we. I'll walk into a situation and I'll be like, <laughs> I'll call in my ancestors. I'll call in, you know, just even even the women that I know are around me and who support me, um, whether it's in the physical plane or the spiritual plane, I just call it in. I call in that energy because it's not that it's just Charlene Sanjenko showing up for a meeting. It's <laughs> I might be the one with the, I might be the mouthpiece <laughs> for that particular meeting, but I'm there on behalf of many more. Um, I especially think about the future generations and, you know, that helps me to be more brave um, because I know that every interaction and decision is that opportunity to, you know, to, to create change and transformation that might shift a course for, we, we have no idea 40, 50, 60 years down the road, what we do today, what, what that looks like, um, you know, that far down the road. Um, as a founder and as a facilitator of this program, I've just seen over and over again, you know, I've always tried to, to speak with, with women around, you know, don't, don't talk just for the sake of talking. Speak with intention and understand that a really well articulated vision that is expressed to yourself with others and publicly, that's how you articulate that's that's how you activate the energy around that vision. That's how you activate the energy and put it into motion. And um, that could be calling in the people you need to call in to help take next steps. That might be getting clarity on a, a, another piece. But articulating your vision and it takes time and it takes work and speaking to it helps to activate the energy needed for you to walk into the experience of that vision. And that's the whole point of why we're here. <laughs> like that's, that's really, you know, the whole point of, I think human experience, but, um, and then as a visionary, I guess the last thing I'll say is with any, you know, media, women's leadership, women's empowerment, personal development, like why would we do anything why would we choose to do anything the same way we did it a decade ago? You know, nature changes every single day. So if I'm not walking a growth edge and doing things slightly differently or having slightly different conversations or, you know, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, that, that is where expansion happens. And so why would we... I, I would never want to bring something back and and do it in, in the exact same format as as it's been done, you know, years ago, because how can you expect a different result? So true. So true, Cher. Love some points that I got from from that piece that really stood out to me was who and what can support you in being more brave? And, you know, the shift that you spoke about previously was, you know, shifting from the me to the we. You know, how is this going to support even that question, future generations? And sometimes it's, I might just impact one person in the audience and that's enough. And I remember a coach of mine told me before, this was a game changer for me as a speaker, was, Shauna, it is not your job to get up on the stage and for everybody to like you. Some people will like you and some people will not like you. And that's okay. It's not your job to make everyone like you. Just focus on the ones that do resonate with your message and what you have to share. Because you're going up on that stage for a reason. And that, for me, is something I say to myself all the time. My story is not going to be for everybody. And that is okay. 
it just takes that pressure off but it's going to be for somebody and your story is for somebody um so I love that and and so true on that growth edge um and choosing your growth edge you know that's been a, a theme that for me personally the last little while it's I'm choosing this as my expansion I'm choosing this as my growth edge I know I'm intentionally consciously going into situations where I'm going to be uncomfortable but I'm choosing it for me um and sometimes speaking is that for people right like sharing these stories but it's you're constant consciously choosing to step into that growth edge um and that's what speak is all about but it's doing it collectively and it's having the right support system, tools, knowledge, people, encouragement around you as you're in that growth edge. So tell me about Speak 2.0. What's changed since Speak, the first version of Speak? Um, what are you seeking at this time to elevate Speak and support the right people? Well, I think... Yeah, thank you for all of that. Um, I love the reflections. Um, I think one of the things, you know, there were certainly seeds planted um, that I want to kind of check in on now, you know, like I'll give you an example. When we would do the Power Talk series, um, the Power Talk speaker series, and I think, you know, some of the folks that are that are here today, you know, were even at at an event. Um, I always thought it was important to not only do the, the learning, but also to be able to actually have the opportunity for women to, to have a stage or have a platform if that was, you know, comfortable for them. Um, whether we, we called them speak celebration presentations and, um, and then at the next level, we actually, you know, planned Power Talks events and recorded many, many talks. Um, one talk was quite impactful, you know, a nine minute talk that someone had gotten, you know, very, very clear on their on their message and, and what they wanted the experience of that talk to be. But, you know, the the truly transformative experience happened when you put the nine talks together, nine curated talks. And the, the interesting thing that I found about that I really um, started to understand through that experience. And I didn't plan some of these talks like, yeah, I would curate it. To, I would curate an event and I would generally know what people was talk, uh, were wanting to talk about, but the way they ended up, lining up and the experience that they created um, was definitely like divine intervention because they were like truly transformative experiences. And so what that has me wanting to lean into a little more throughout throughout speak and and you know events and and even you know in the work in in regenerative media that we're doing is, is kind of back back to that from from me to we and it really is having us utilizing speak as a vehicle to have people really start to understand that the solutions we need now what we're most seeking at this time is not any one individual's work or solution. It, it truly is that, that magic, that, you know, magic that runs between us. And, and because you can't quite see it, you know, it's hard to kind of put your finger on it. It's, it's kind of that, you know, that I call them impact intersections because I had to name them something, <laughs> but it's really that, the, um, the, the magic that runs in between two or more folks. And it's really, I always say like the greatness, the greatness is in the middle. Um, we started to see that through and having women experience that through this, through a, a vehicle of speak. 
Um, if y'all wanted to play football, we could experience it there, but <laughs> it, it, it's easier to, <laughs> it's easier to create these vehicles, you know, these vehicles, but you, you also can kind of see that magic happen, um, between athletes and, and, you know, between teams, um, my girlfriend, Catherine Eaton, who is a, an incredible filmmaker, she calls it um, collective genius. And we've really we've really played into, you know, so but where where do you get the opportunities to actually play in that? Where do you? And I'm not talking about collaboration. Collaboration has been talked about for a very, very long time. And it has a role, but I think there is a much purer experience that's available to us when we really want to kind of understand and dig into and explore that magic that's in between us. So any, so that's, that's one possibility that I see through this next um, iteration of what's possible through speak and I'm purposely calling it Speak 2.0 Global because that's the intention I want to hold pulling it forward. And even doing that, um, you know, taking that step and, and deciding to do that right out of the gate has started to bring in some early interest and some early conversations with um, folks and networks and champions in in other parts of of the world and um, yeah I think that that's that's part of the experience that I'm looking to to create or co-create through this program and who are you who are you calling into that who is speak for um what are the different types of women that you see in this program? What partnerships yeah. matter? Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, and I've definitely had a few conversations, you know, with the women here today, um, to be able to take speak to the next level. It it is, you know, having the the academic partners or the association, industry association partners who are intermediaries, um, any of those networks and contacts. We were lucky enough to run Speak through an academic partner years ago, and I think it went quite well. I'd like to, to see that happen. I'm already um, lucky enough to have someone that's making an introduction with a university in India to see if there's a desire there. Um, I think on the ground, um, community champions, especially in new markets, are are really, really important. Um, I call those folks like the catalysts, right? They're the catalysts or the connectors. Um, and, and then I think the glue of it all are, you know, our program partners who are the program delivery partners, um, who are the corporate sponsors that want to get involved, who are the funders that this might be appropriate for, um, and part of the growth plan or the scalability plan really with Speak is um, I'm the creator of this program. It came through me. I was, you know, blessed enough to, ch to you know, to channel it and get it out. But but really, I think it it is an opportunity for there to be, you know, many program champions if they feel that it it aligns with their work in the world in some way. It is definitely something to be shared now. And um, I think we were just the ones, you know, I was the one to bring it into the world and now it's ready to, to be shared. 